गुड मॉर्निंग एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर सत्यनारायण प्रोफेसर एच ओडी डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ अनेस्थिशालजी एंड क्रिटिकल केयर मेडिसिन शादा इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ मेडिकल साइंसेस टुडे आई वुड लाइक टू डिस्कस वेरी बेसिक एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ ऑक्सीजन थेरेपी इन ऑन गोइंग पैंडमिक कोविड कंडीशंस सो वॉट इज अ टाइप ऑफ डिवाइज कॉमनली बी यूज हाउ दिस हेल्प्स एंड हाउ different devices so there is a escalation from from one device to other device how to uh, what is a choice and how to get into different devices how and at at home particularly we are all worried about this at home therapy at, at home uh, when the patient is to be treated at home what kind of oxygen devices can be used and how it is going to be useful before before discussing an oxygen therapy and all uh, the most important thing is when we are breathing room air everyone healthy patient conscious patient room in uh, breathing room air it contains 21% of oxygen this 21% of oxygen uh, with with that we are surviving every organ is functioning but uh, the important other thing about uh, what is that monitoring commonly people nowadays doing hand held pulse oximeter so hand held pulse oximeter it shows saturation and pulse rate so in young patient hale and healthy patient without any disease the saturation from 98 to 100% it is a normal but in elderly patient more than 70 75 years anything above 96% you consider normal only but in younger patient less than 96 or 95 it is abnormal so and one more thing i would like to add this is exactly the percentage is not the one to tell you what is oxygenation going in the in the body so remember when 21% air we are breathing saturation is showing 100 in the blood the oxygen is known as oxygen tension that is 100 mm of mercury so this oxygen tension is the one which helps the delivery of oxygen to the various tissues and vital organs like brain heart and all so this oxygen tension has to maintain uh, only indirectly we are monitoring whether oxygen is being taking place or not so example when saturation drops to 100 to up to 90% the tension also gradually decreases from 100 to 80 or 70 but it when oxygen saturation reaches to 90 remember the oxygen tension in the blood it drops to 60 mm of mercury so oxygen saturation 90 it is we call critical point from below 90 the tissues are exposed to hypoxia and complications develops so what is again up to 90% uh, to above 90% to some extent the tissue oxygen level will be maintained oxygen is flowing but when reaches to 90 a drastic fall in the oxygen tension and a patient will have a complications so keeping in the mind so let us have uh, suppose a patient even in a healthy patient uh, in the first week of uh, symptoms uh, usually there won't be any problem but uh, as the second week starts usually oxygenation issue becomes some some patients uh, if the viral load is very high from fifth fourth or fifth day onwards uh, there will be saturation problem and drop in the saturation so initially the reason is uh, there is a inflammation on the alveoli because as oxygen going where is the final destination of oxygen when you breathe oxygen it is alveoli so alveoli is an inflamed alveoli is not working so oxygen will not reach to the blood so at this level if the saturation drops up to below 90 up to 95 there won't be any requirement of oxygen therapy but below 95 94 onwards you may require oxygen to start with you should have a oxygen source either in the form of oxygen cylinder or a oxygen concentrator but oxygen concentrator only uh, a mild oxygen mild hypoxia when you call mild hypoxia when saturation is around above uh, 93 or 94 you call mild below uh, from 90 to 92 it is a moderate and less than 90% it is a severe so up to mild level you can use oxygen concentrator so again uh, the nasal prongs nasal cannula is a commonest device it's a, everyone knows that you put a so nasal prongs here and tie back and the oxygen source is attached 
and the rate of flow is 2 to 4 liters in some may recommend 6 liters but remember the patient will not tolerate if you keep uh, more than 4 liters of oxygen through the nasal prongs because it, it causes dryness of the mucosa patient will not tolerate one more thing when the, you are giving oxygen through the nasal prongs as the patient closes his mouth if with open mouth if you taking nasal uh, oxygen it will be leaked out and oxygen saturation will not be maintained the second uh, so normally when do you satisfy with the nasal prongs it was 94 you, you started keeping the nasal prongs when it reaches to above 96 97 it's okay happy this is accepted but uh, some people over a period of time, the nasal prongs may not be accepted and may not be tolerated. The next device here at home we can use Hudson's mask. It's a plastic mask. It covers face and oral cavity. There are holes in that and through uh, oxygen source again a, a connection will be given. But here this is called Hudson's mask. Hudson's mask. Here the oxygen flow you have to maintain about 5 to 10 liters uh, unlike nasal cannula where 4 to 2 to 4 liters. Here you have to give, use 5 to 10 liters. Anything below 5 liters, if you use, it will come, it causes more harm than any benefit. So, uh, some people, uh, they be, again, they accept nicely the, uh, when the oxygen saturation improves. Again, in this also, what is the targeted oxygen saturation? Again, anything above 96, 97% is happy, it's okay. But after second week, I told you, uh, second week onwards, in some patients, the desaturation oxygen fall rapidly because the blood supply which is going to the lung, getting uh, blood will be clot in the uh, blood supply, the blood vessels. So further hampers the oxygenation. And the second week onwards is very crucial. So here you can, if, how do you say what? How do you say that uh, the the patient severity becoming? He was normally maintaining with nasal prongs and Hudson's mask about 96, 97, once the second week, again, uh, the saturation start dropping. It's dropping 95, 94, 92. What is the important thing to be noticed? As the saturation drops, his respiratory rate increases, increases, increases. So it is uh, not only saturation you are, you are supposed to monitor, it is a respiratory rate. Any patient whose respiratory rate, when you count for one minute, more than 30, that means he is very serious, he has to be shifted to the hospital. Even the saturation maintaining above 95, 96, if his respiratory rate is more than 35, around 30, 35, he is going to collapse at any time. So he has to shift the patient. Once the patient being shifted, then uh, the initially the device is known as, initially they put Hudson's mask, there you can attach non-rebreathing uh, non rebreathing mask attached to the non-rebreathing mask is a bag like like a bag like thing attached to the Hudson's mask where 100 percent oxygen can be given uh, 10 to 15 liters of flow here the oxygen saturation improves drastically but after some time there are some patients about 20 to 30 percent of patients they improve nicely with a uh, oxygen mask with a non-rebreathing bag but in some patients, this also may not be tolerated. Again, the problem is, in spite of saturation maintaining uh, around 95, 96, again, the respiratory rate is an issue. When the, what, what, why this respiratory rate uh, is very crucial? As the patient is breathing more than 30 or 35 per minute, that means the, whatever the oxygen he is taking, the most of the oxygen will be used by this respiratory muscles because they are acting more, they are active, they are contracting more, they take oxygen mostly and the availability of oxygen to the tissues and brain will come down. So that is the, that is the importance of respiratory rate. It should be less than 25 always to be at least 25 you are targeted. So once you feel that this type of device patient is not tolerating and then next is the most important device nowadays worldwide become high frequency nasal cannulation, high frequency. This is the, this is the most important device where a patient improvement where a patient, uh, the advantage is the patient acceptance, the positive pressure, humidified oxygen, and all the features are there. The patient will be uh, patient will be nicely tolerated. But here the only problem is we have to use 60 to 40 liters of flow per minute. So now the short being oxygen shortage being a big issue. So people are kept this device at a side because we have to 
uh, use of 40 to 60 liters per minute of oxygen otherwise is a very good device so once if you have this device there is no constraint of oxygen usage this is the best device uh, being used and most of the patients recovered very effectively and the target of using device preventing intubation in patient going on mechanical ventilation or ventilator this is the main target of all critical care people so try to try to improve the oxygen with without allowing the patient to go into on the ventilator so once the hfnc is not available or is a constraint then you have a niv mask that is bipap and cpap machine so bipap cpap machine is the next option but here also there are some limitations there are advantages definitely advantages is the strain on the patient is come down the work of breathing the respiratory muscles which uh, is activity come down the fatigueness will come down the patient uh, complaints is improves and oxygen saturation improves but only thing is technical problems you have to keep air tight and some patient when you keep such a big mask over the face air tight the most of the patient they uh, feel like a claustrophobia and they may not tolerate so that you should be convinced about this and we have an CPAP and BiPAP there is a one more it's a, this comes under non-invasive mechanical ventilation so BiPAP is another uh, mode of NIV and mostly the patient tolerance is very good and this is a very useful uh, in a pre-existing lung disease already patient has some lung disease affected with the COVID this is a very good option or patient has some cardiac disease affected COVID this is a very good option but ultimately uh, NIV high flow oxygen therapy all kind of oxygen therapy there is a aerosol is liberated so that should be taken care by uh, the personnel uh, medical personnel who is treating what is the best thing to advise after putting the device to for oxygen he has to put an oxygen mask over the device either nasal prongs Hudson mask niv you have to put ask him to put a face mask so that spillover of uh, expired air a contamination will come down so there is from distance of 40 centimeters to 1.5 meters of area even with devices uh, the aerosol will be there and virus can be uh, spread over this area so medical personnel so with this uh, niv and uh, niv is the last option but once you feel that patient is not tolerating niv also and uh, all kind of uh, devices Ultimately, what is that uh, you feel that patient is going towards uh, bad uh, situation like saturation hardly improving with the high flow rates and ABG is the one frequently we do ABG that is where you see arterial blood gas analysis where oxygen tension. So in spite of giving uh, all kind of uh, support with the various devices, a patient is not maintaining and finally uh, there is a hypotension, there is a, all the systems being affected and finally he has to be on uh, intubation mechanical ventilation. Remember, once the patient uh, being on the mechanical ventilation ventilator, the mortality rate is more than 80%. So that is what and worldwide um, they are trying to prevent the patient uh, going on to mechanical ventilation ventilator and various devices. The only thing is at what time, what device to be used it is a discretion or an experience of clinician uh, he has to uh, use precisely and see that there is an individual variation always. So individual to individual uh, you have to use uh, the device, uh, different devices and optimum time to be used and, uh, and get a, a benefit of the patient. And once the patient is some patient, majority patient uh, discharged, even the oxygen uh, room air, uh, the patient is breathing on without oxygen, 93, 94, 95 accepted, uh, they send home and these are the patient uh, for some time, uh, it can be treated at home with a oxygen concentrator, home therapy oxygen concentrator after discharge. So oxygen concentrator usually very useful after patient discharge, but still their oxygen saturation is a lower side. So this is uh, the, the brief uh, uh, about uh, devices being used and oxygen, how oxygen is going to be uh, crucial in a, a COVID uh, pandemic COVID patients. Thank you very much.